Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Lifestyle Image Network. So glad to see you here, sis. We are going to unpack a teeny tiny book called Obadiah. But first, let's say a word of prayer. God, I'm so thankful and grateful for who you are and how you can take just these few words that Obadiah spoke to make such an impact in our lives. Thank you and praise you for your warnings of judgment and for your forgiveness and for your reconciliation and bringing us back into right standing with you. You're an amazing God and we love you. We thank you and we praise you. Bless us during this time and be glorified in our lives in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. So Obadiah, it's a whopping one chapter. So like this is one of those books of the Bible that you could like easily study, um, do a character study on, um, really just break it down and take it piece by piece, which is what I kind of like to do. And so this book of Obadiah, first of all, means his name is amazing. It just means like messenger of God, messenger of Yahweh. Like that's literally who he is and who he was born to be. So let's just pause right there. You are created for a purpose by God and you are constructed and built in such a way to bring him glory through your life. I just want you to know that because it's incredible how just his name defines who he was and what he was born to do. We're all born to glorify God in some capacity. And Obadiah was a messenger of God. And so I just wanted to pause for the cause there and remind you who you are, because God makes all of us, um, especially for his glory. Amen. So let's look at this. The book of Obadiah is kind of like if you could break it in half. You've got like a message over here and a message over here. So let's look at this. In Obadiah chapter one, verses eight through 16 is like the first part of the message. And then 17 through 21 is the rest. And that's it. And so in this first part, what we're seeing is Obadiah is sent as a messenger, but to who? He's sent to Edom, which is Judah's neighbor. And literally like, that's kind of scary if uh, God sent one prophet to talk all about just y'all. <laughs> there was a problem here. There was a problem in the camp. Let's see what the problem was. Oh, there it is. They were prideful. <laughs> Pride was their issue. They thought they were all that in a bag of chips and God had to let them know that they were not. And the bottom line is pride comes before a fall. The Bible lets us know that in other passages. We can't be thinking that we are all that and that we are just the stuff without God. Um, there is much to be said about humility and about humbling ourselves before God so that he can lift us up, about not boasting about ourselves, but allowing another person to tell other people how awesome you are. Um, as a Christian, we are called to be like Christ, who was meek. He was mild. He was humble. He stood firm for God. Don't get it twisted. He was bold about God. He was bold for the things of God, but he was mild and he was not prideful. He was God. So he didn't have need for pride. He was God. That's different than pride that you see people experience today where they're just like, Shh, I'm too good for this. I'm too good for that. I'm too good to serve. I'm too good to give. I'm too good to stand to read the word. I'm too good to serve. You know, that's, that's pride. And, and I pray that we squash it in our lives in the name of Jesus and that we do not um, revel in that because it's sin and it is a bad witness and it doesn't share the love of Jesus with other people. So in this first part of Obadiah, basically he's telling these people, you're going to reap what you've sown because of this pride. You are a blessed people and you're blessed, not just for yourselves, but you're blessed to be a blessing. And if you're not seeking the welfare of others, if you're not going out of your way to bless other people, then you're misusing what God has given you. Now, let, let's think about this. You're literally if you are not sharing what God has given you, then you're not using it correctly. Your gifts, your talents, your abilities, your time, your effort. 
God blesses you so that you can bless others. He is a seed sowing kind of God. He wants you to put what you have in the ground so that it will multiply. Why? So that you can bless others. He wants you to take what you've been given and he wants you to mix it up and he wants you to redistribute it to other people. Why? Because you're blessed to be a blessing. And so whatever you have and whatever way God has, has endowed you with skills, gifts, talents, abilities, all of those things are for his glory for one thing. And secondly, it's for others. It's not just for you. He wants you to stand out. He wants you to use those things. He wants you to go forth in the ministry, in the business, in, in, in the book, in the song, whatever he's called you to do for his glory so you can bless other people. And so that's where Edom is making their mistake. They're blessed, but they're keeping it all to themselves. And then they're talking about how great they are and how awesome their gifts, skills, and talents and abilities are. We're like, we're rocking it. We, we're all that. And God is like, oh, whoa, whoa to you. This is not what I designed you to be. So then we look at the second part of Obadiah. He pretty much says, I'm God of everything and you are not. <laughs> He's like, I'm God and you are not. You can't brag about how awesome you are without me. If we're going to brag, let's brag about me, is what God is saying. I rule over all the kingdoms in all the world forever. And by the way, I designed them and I designed you take several seats. <laughs> the kingdoms of the world belong to God and he gives them to you if you got one. God reigns over everything. And guess what? Those who acknowledge him, those who claim him as their father will reign with him forever. You can be in that number or you can be a part of out of that number. I mean, you can be with him, you can be against him. You can be for him or you can get like run over by him. I mean, it's just, it's what it is. Um, and so God is like ever so gently and sweetly telling us, I'm God, you're not, sit down, humble yourself, realize who I am, realize who you are because I already know who you are because I created you. So I know who you are and I know what you're capable of and I know what I've given you and I know how you can use it best if you would only acknowledge me first. So let's pray right here because sometimes pride is sneaky. It's one of those sins that you don't know that you have it a lot of times until somebody else points it out and they're like, man, you're so prideful. You're not very humble. You know, um, you say something, you do something and you don't realize that sneaky sin has crept up behind you. And so we want God to do it. We want God to do the work, find it, God, purge it out, uproot it out of my life. Like I want to be humble like Jesus. I don't want to run around here and think that everything that I'm doing or I'm saying or who I am and what I've done is, is all because of me. It's all because of God. We, we live and move and have our being because of God. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just confess before you that you are God. You are the great and mighty Jehovah God. And we are nothing without you, period. God, we, we need you to help us to use our gifts, skills, talents, abilities, and all of the gifts, all of the things that you've given us for your glory. We don't ever want to become prideful, Lord God. That's what the enemy did. He wanted to be like God. And then he turned against God. Lord, we don't want to turn against you. And so we repent before you and we ask you to cleanse us out. Pull up any pride in our hearts. Pull up any pride in our minds. God, we renounce it right now in the name of Jesus. I'm praying, Father God, that you will fill us instead with humility and love. Give us the courage to serve, to, to look out for others more than ourselves, to pray for others, to do for others. And help us never to get caught in the trap of pride like the city of Edom. We thank you that you are a forgiving and loving and graceful and merciful God. We receive your grace. We receive your mercy. We receive your forgiveness right now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, that's it. Obadiah is such a short and sweet book about not falling to the sin of pride. So let's not do that. Let's instead be humble. Ask God to humble you. It's a tough prayer. 
but it's a good prayer. All right, until next time. Bye.